Le Beautiful Community. Emmanuel Macron has said that we should not be cowards in our allyship and support for Ukraine. And that's come a few days after he said that we can't fully rule out the idea of troops on the ground. What is going on? What is the meaning of this? And what, why does it sound so incongruent with um, the wider context of European policy toward the brutal invasion um, of Ukraine that the Kremlin tyrant has instigated? Let's look at what Macron has said and then te contextualize it a bit. He said he stood fully behind his remarks about not ruling out troops on the ground. He said, we're surely approaching a moment for Europe in which it'll be necessary not to be cowards. We, you know, never want to see the tragedies that are coming. We're well aware that war is back on our soil and some powers are extending every day their threat of attacking us. And we have to live up to what history and courage requires of us. Is this our war or is this not? Can we look away in the belief that things will run their course? I don't think so. And therefore I call for a strategic surge and I stand fully behind that. We want no escalation. We've never been belligerent. Well, now let's put down two principles straight away about big politics. In big politics, words are deeds. You can't just go around saying stuff without conceiving what you're saying as itself a significant action. So that's very important because the words of major leaders are taken as actions. Two, when you're struggling to do something and it feels like you can't do it, fabrication is often better than nothing at all. So fabrication of momentum that isn't really there is often better than nothing because that fabrication can in of itself generate a tiny amount of momentum. When you, you say things like that, you've got to be very careful because you absolutely cannot fabricate anything you want into existence. Fabrication operates within the strict limits of historical conditions, institutional conditions, cultural, political conditions you're in. But that doesn't mean you can't shift things a little bit by fabrication. And of course, Americans know this very well because the fabrication of um, hope that Barack Obama ran on in 2008 was a very classic example of um, trying to um, overstate things to make things that don't feel quite possible a little less impossible. Now, somebody might say that Obama remained in handcuffs, as it were, in terms of what he could accomplish throughout his um, terms. But nevertheless, it's a very basic political strategy. So having said this about fabrication and about, you know, words being deeds and politics, what, what on earth is going on? And how will this be taken in, in the Kremlin and maybe even in Ukraine? U.S. power is gradually receding from the world. Right? It's a gradual process. It's a slow process, but, but that's the pattern that we're in. This could be radically exaggerated, uh, intensified by the election of Trump. Europe needs to begin preparing for a scenario in which the U.S. increasingly sidelines itself from the Russo-Ukrainian war. That doesn't mean Europe knows what to do. That doesn't mean that we can be confident Europe can do um, what it needs to do. But it does mean that Europe is going to start moving about and shuffling around. And different centers of power in Europe are going to try to take the lead. So part of the point of what's going on is literally what we saw in, in the quote about trying to take steps forward toward a strategy. So this is Europe waking up to the fact that it needs to wake up. 
This is not Europe waking up. This is not Europe even knowing what to do having woken up. This is not Europe even being able to do anything having woken up. But this is Europe waking up to the idea that it needs to wake up. So that is basically the context uh, uh, occurring against this big background of um, a risk of the United States sidelining itself. Now, how will this be taken? I think at this stage in the Kremlin, it'll be taken as a sign of weakness. Europe doesn't look like it can pick up the pieces. Europe is speaking in a cacophony of voices, and the voices aren't just cacophonous across different individuals and across um, different polities. It's cacophonous inside the same individuals, right? So it's not just that France is talking about troops on the ground, but Germany is talking about not supplying particular weapon systems, um, which gives the impression that um, e e Europe is in, in a message which says supplying certain weapon systems is an unacceptable escalation, but troops on the ground might not be an unacceptable escalation. Right? So, but that cacophony is also occurring within the messages of single individuals. In other words, it's entirely plausible that having said this, three months later, Macron will say, let's negotiate with Putin. So, um, th this message is not about clarity. This message is about waking up to the fact that there is no clarity and there is no strategy and there is no strategy even about waking up to the idea that there's no strategy. And in Ukraine, this set of contradictory messages will, for now, generate a combination of um, hope and anxiety, more anxiety than hope, uh, because of the ill-assorted nature of um, what Europe is coming up with at this point. But I don't think we should be entirely dismissive of this ill-assorted nature because it is the beginning of a shuffling about um, in response to the question that Europe has to begin waking up. So that's my two cents about um, these pronouncements from the French leader. Lots of love.